Just going to dive straight into uh, the next conversation. Uh, Professor Uche Uwaleke has, uh, has, has a master's degree holder uh, in economics and a PhD in finance. He's the head of accounting at the Nasarawa State University. He's live to us now from Channel's studios in Abuja, Nigeria's political uh, capital. Uh, Professor, good morning. It's good to have you on the show. Uh, good morning, Boasin. Um, nice to be here. I, I am actually the head of banking and finance in Nasarawa State University. I'm just going to add... Uh, accounting. I'm just going to add a bit of an accounting to that. Let, of course, we have to make some accounting here today yes. uh, because it's very important. Yes, um, of course, I'm, I'm a fellow of ICANN. I was, I was the head of accounting department. You've had so many. So you've spent some time in the ivory towers. Um, so... Uh, when, you look, when, when we look at the state of the universities today, if I'm a visitor to a university and I walk into uh, a public universities, let's start from there, and then I look at the hostels, I look at the canteen, I look at the, the, the lecture rooms, I look at the, uh, uh, the, the toiletries and other things, what do I really see? Well, um, as a matter of fact, only yesterday I saw a post in the social media uh, about um, uh, one of the public universities um, in Nigeria where uh, students, a um, number of students were seen on the floor receiving lectures. And of course, you know, that's uh, a common sight in, in many of them. It's not just uh, for that, that particular university. So that goes to buttress the, the findings of uh, the NEET assessment report uh, that was um, released, I think, sometime in 2012. If you recall, in 2012, um, the federal government set up a, um, a, um, um, a, a committee to study the needs of um, Nigerian universities. And what, what uh, came out, um, uh, the findings were, were shocking. Um, you know, overcrowded classrooms, um, uh, the ratio of equipment to student equipment ratio, one to 500, uh, you know, situations where you had uh, laboratories where kerosene, kerosene stoves were used as a bonsum burner and so on and so forth. So the situation is really, really um, uh, terrible um, in the Nigerian universities today. Um, but again, um, uh, looking at um, the role that Ted Fund has played, uh, you could also say that uh, Ted Fund has, um, um, to, to a large extent, helped you know, to uh, bridge the infrastructure gap in the universities um, uh, today. Um, so it's, it's the funding is, is actually a challenge, and that's why um, I am in support of the fact that we are having uh, new universities to improve their access, because the, the, the fact remains that the funding is not matching the increased number of students desiring uh, you know, university education. So if we have more private universities, that will uh, relieve the government um, of the burden. Of, um, of this funding, particularly so when some of the private universities that have been licensed are specialized universities. Uh, for, for example, the last six that you talked about, three of them are more or less specialized universities. You have another university in Delta. You also have the um, University of Medical Sciences in Port Harcourt, and another University of Medical Sciences um, in Lagos. So for me, these are the kinds of universities we should be, we should be having, uh, specialized universities. And with regard to public um, um, universities, I also think that we can begin to, um, you know, do uh, what I call differential funding, you know, funding based on um, d disciplines. And uh, that way you are linking funding to our national development agenda. Um, we have an economic reco recovery and growth plan, for example, that uh, is targeting 7% GDP growth, you know, by 2020. And it's also uh, saying for that to happen that um, there are enablers, uh, uh, a major one, of course, being infrastructure, uh, being power. So if we have, uh, if we recognize, for example, that we have this um, um, uh, low stock of um, infrastructure to GDP, as low as 30%, and we want to ramp, ramp it up, okay, the universities uh, can play a major role. And that's why I feel, too, that the funding of universities now should now target those disciplines that will help us, you know, achieve these targets. We are talking about diversification. One diversifying into agriculture, solid minerals. So if we want to link funding to our development ag agenda, it means we have to give attention to universities of agriculture. We have to give attention to colleges of agriculture. We have to give attention to universities of technology. In this country today, we we'll have three universities of agriculture, Makodi, uh, Akure, and, um, and Domodike. These universities should be made centers of excellence, in my view. And um, 
The same for uh, investors of technologies. We have four of them in Nigeria today. So uh, talking about ranking of universities, you realize that um, you hardly find a Nigerian university in the world um, uh, world ranking of universities, and that's because we have not uh, really uh, funded these universities appropriately, uh, professor, and given the scarce resources I, that we have. Professor, may I respectfully uh, I'll cut in there very quickly, uh, because we have a very, uh, we're going to have some enough time to, for this conversation, but I, will, I, will, I want to ask this. Uh, shouldn't we uh, look at public universities and how where we missed the way and because public universities is the one that will address the need of the common man people who can afford the tuition and what have you we keep increasing the number of private universities licensing and the cost of tuition and other things are way 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 out of today's economic realities of many households so are you suggesting we should do more private universities and let the public universities go down totally down the drain no of course i'm not suggesting that um, um, uh, you see they should uh, exist side by side in many countries of the world today that's what we have i was just looking at uh, before i come in here I, I just looked at a report by the southern african development Co you know, community you know as association of universities uh, that whole area uh, has about 56 public universities and 178 um, private universities. But the interesting thing, South Africa alone has to, about 23 public universities. But the interesting thing is that the bulk of the uh, student enrollment is, um, um, is even in um, a public university. So as you rightly said, we need to give attention you know, to public universities. Now, all, now, all I'm saying is that even within public universities, that there's need for us to, uh, to apply these cash funds um, uh, if you like more efficiently and uh, doing so will require that we identify um, programs that are very critical to our national devel you know, e e e de development agenda talking about science science is talking about engineering okay uh, talking about medicine so we focus attention on on these ones i give an example if you if uh, in some universities for example if 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 you apply to study um, engineering you, you'll be required to pay higher than somebody who applied to study maybe an arts, um, an arts course because of the practicals that, you know, that, that will be involved. But that shouldn't be so. I'm saying uh, uh, such should be subsidized by the, gov by the government. Uh, somebody going in for engineering, because that is what we need in this country today. Somebody going in for sciences, somebody going in for medicine, okay? Uh, we, sh we should be able to, uh, we, should, we should take lower fees from such people than those uh, going in for arts, social sciences, or even um, uh, management or administration. I'm not saying those, these courses are not important. I, I, that's even my field. But I am saying that in this, given our critical situation in this country, what we need to drive development, to drive growth, you know, uh, uh, um, courses in the sciences, courses in engineering, and um, and, and, and medicine. So if we can identify these uh, courses, we should even, even agriculture, we should you know, be in a position to give scholarships to those who are uh, go, going into such fields. Of course, you also know that the attraction is not there. If you set up a university of engineering uh, you know, uh, technology today, you hardly find students going there. But if it's a, if it's a conventional one, you would have uh, people going because you are mounting faculties of um, uh, arts, social sciences, and, um, and administration. So you have more students in those universities than you have in universities in, of technology. And that's why I'm saying that government should incentivize, incentivize you know, uh, uh, these programs and make them attractive to uh, students so that our people can see the need to go into agriculture. There's no reason, for example, why the three universities we have in this country should not drive, should not champion you know, the, the food um, security um, objective we are, we, are, we, are, we, you know, we are pursuing in line with the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. So universities should be given mandates. They should, uh, there should be mandates. Uh, University of Agriculture, Makodi, for example, should have a mandate. If we're saying we, have food, we want to achieve self-sufficiency in a yam production, University of Agriculture can have that mandate. University of Agriculture Mumunike can also have a mandate, liaising with the, 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 the techno, University of Technology in, in, a, in a way, you know, to make sure that you know, farming is also mechanized. 